under a cloak of darkness in a remote Australian forest. A wombat sleeps in a patch of moonlight. It twitches as if dreaming, but reality is worse than any nightmare. The wombat has been possessed. From the entrails of this dead beast, the devil himself has burst forth. This foul-smelling, fierce-toothed Tasmanian devil is the undertaker of the forest. The very name devil suggests evil and the powers of darkness. But is its diabolical reputation deserved? An autumn sun warms the ice-carved rock of Tasmania's Cradle Mountain. Change is in the air. Winter snows will soon blanket this remote corner of Australia, and young devils are in search of hiding places. This female is little more than a year old. Her short life will be violent and dangerous. She will soon attract the attention of larger males wherever she settles in this high forest. The southern beech is Australia's only deciduous tree. In autumn, they paint Cradle Mountain in gold leaf. Many voices haunt this forest, and many eyes watch for trouble. A paddy melon, a small plant eater, watches the female. The size of a small dog, a devil will eat almost anything, dead or alive. A keen nose leads the female to some large moths, recently emerged from pupae on the forest floor. The forest here has abundant sources of food. She spends several nights here feeding and searching for a den. The wombat, a large burrowing relative of the koala bear, sets off for a night's grazing out on the grassland. As it wanders, it uses other dens or builds new ones, leaving behind a trail of empty homes. The wombat shares the grassland with other marsupials, like this wallaby with a joey in its pouch. All marsupials suckle and protect their young in a pouch, even the Tasmanian devil. The wombat locates one of its many burrows close to where it's feeding. It checks for intruders before continuing its night's foraging. Later in the evening, the young devil discovers the wombat's vacant home. 
Inside, the burrow is totally dark, but a camera sensitive to infrared light illuminates it, revealing the never-before-seen private life of the Tasmanian devil. Satisfied that she is alone and unseen, she adapts the burrow for her own needs. That begins with a thorough clean-out. She disposes of the wombat's bedding, then starts redecorating by digging out extra living area. Once the work is done, the female prepares to go out and select some new furniture. Cautiously, she scents the air. She has heard other devils these past few nights. Now she smells them. She investigates beech trees close to her new home and begins gathering mouthfuls of fresh twigs and branches to line her nest. Over the next few nights, she becomes a homemaker and nest builder. She works tirelessly and with instinctive skill, and in total darkness within the burrow. Unconsciously, she is spurred on in her labor by mysterious devil cries from the darkness of the forest. Already tonight, her ears have detected the cries are becoming louder, closer. Eerie screams that once terrified human settlers in these woods are uttered by male rivals who challenge for possession of this devil's playground. again won the right to mate with females in this part of the forest. He's only four years old, but that's ancient for a Tasmanian devil. This will be his last breeding year. He picks up the scent of the young female. She is new. Her odor is unfamiliar. He must be cautious. Even a young female a third of his size can be dangerous and will fight him off if she's not ready to mate. Will she tolerate him? In the past few days, a thick ridge of fat has developed on the back of her neck. She's also stopped eating. Experience tells the old male that she's ready, but he also knows that he risks a savage fight.
The returning wombat decides that what's happening in his burrow is best left alone. Fortunately, this isn't his only home in this part of the forest. In the burrow, a change is taking place. The intensity of the fight and the size and power of the male finally subdues her. Unable to drive him off, she submits. Mating continues for several hours. Then they rest. She is held captive in her own home. The male guards the entrance to the tunnel throughout the night. A brush-tailed possum distracts his attention. The female seizes her chance for freedom. But the male hasn't finished with her yet. His tactics are brutal. He takes her by the scruff of the neck and hauls her back to the den. Part walking, part dragged, the young female is forced back to the den that is now her prison. She has become a sex slave to the male. Once more, he has her under house arrest, and his intentions are to remain here and mate with her for as long as he possibly can. When not mating, they rest, but he is her jailer. He always takes up a position between her and the burrow entrance. The first snows of winter dust Cradle Mountain. Over two long days, she is a prisoner, not only of the brutal and overpowering male, but of her own hormones. These powerful chemicals seem to drug her into submission. Perhaps it's the only way to endure the rough handling, which leaves her fur as matted and unkempt as a doormat. On the third day, his frenzy of mating intensifies. But he's running out of time. Further chemical changes are taking place within the female. A seething resentment slowly rises within her.
Now it's his turn to feel her aggression. The female will be a doormat no more. She has transformed into a she-devil. Once again, he tries to subdue her. Soundly beaten, he retreats. But his mission is accomplished. No rival will dare approach her in her current mood. And she is pregnant. Exhausted, she sleeps. Inside her for 21 days, she nurtures a devil's brood. It would seem the worst possible time to bring babies into the world as winter settles over Cradle Mountain. Her pregnancy, like that of all marsupials, is remarkably brief. After just three weeks, she becomes restless, a sign that the moment of birth is close. Very soon, she will produce between 30 and 40 young, an extraordinary number for a mammal. What looks like paralysis grips her hind quarters and slowly immobilizes the rear half of her body. It seems that her abdomen tightens as though suffering cramps. She appears stiff and uncomfortable, but finally settles into a birthing position that she will maintain for about an hour. During this hour, her birth canal opens and wriggling out in a flow of fluid will come the scarcely developed babies. From the very moment of birth, a young devil's life is a struggle. Each minute creature, as small as a grain of rice, must battle its way through a forest of hair into the opening of the pouch on its mother's belly. Out of more than 30 young, at most, only four will survive. There are only four nipples in the pouch. This one misses the pouch completely. Another joey does find the pouch. Then, soon after, a second. This is also a race against time. The winners must be safe in the pouch by the time the hour is up, and their mother is released from her almost trance-like paralysis. <laughs> 
Once she's moving again, many wandering young are dislodged from her fur. She's exhausted by the effort of it all and needs to sleep. When she wakes, she cleans the fur around her pouch, perhaps licking up many of the unsuccessful babies. Inside the pouch, the two survivors will remain concealed for the next four months. Unlike many small marsupials, the wombat does not hibernate during winter and prefers to feed by day. His favorite foods are moss and the grasses which he continues to feed on in the snow. Two months have passed since the young female gave birth. Both joeys have their mouths fused to her nipples. As she washes them, we have our first glimpse of the two walnut-sized survivors. They'll be held safe and warm in the pouch, even when she ventures out of the den. Black-clad, evil-eyed, Kurawong survive the cold winter on Cradle Mountain by scavenging. Other Tasmanian birds have long since left here for the warmer coastline. Their keen eyes are quick to notice the female devil leave her burrow. She too is seeking carrion in the snow. Her pouch is tightly closed Neither snow nor icy water can touch her naked brood, snug and warm inside. Deep snow is not to her liking. She heads for a woodland where there's less snow and a better chance of finding food. These are lean times. She must hunt well into the night. A winter casualty. A frozen bird is hardly a feast, but she will use her powerful bone-crushing jaws to consume every part, including feathers, beak, and bone. In the natural scheme of things, the devil's role is to dispose of the dead. In Tasmania, they are nature's undertakers. Life is hard for a highland devil. Those nearer the coast have a much easier time. But the young female conserves energy and keeps her rapidly growing babies warm. It's four months since the birth and the joeys are becoming active in the pouch. The tiny female is so lively that she often tumbles out. After months of confinement, emerging from the pouch is like a second birth. Larger male now joins his sister for the first time. that are barely open are not needed in the dark. 
Everything is to be touched and smelt. Two weeks later, they're frequently out of the pouch. The female Joey is an explorer. Her big brother spends so much time feeding that she finds difficulty getting a meal. Mother continues suckling him, unaware of the female's hunger. The joeys have teeth now. Perhaps a good bite on mother's foot will alert her to the situation. During the next two weeks, the joeys are teething, and their mother is ideal chewing material, though she's less than happy about it. They quickly develop the habit of gnawing on each other's ears. It's obviously time for them to have something more satisfactory to chew on. The two youngsters are becoming used to their mother's departures from the den. This time, she returns with something that will make her life a lot easier. Scraps of skin and meat are not just food. They'll provide hours of chewing to dull the pain of teething and put an edge on young teeth. Her joeys are now five months old and though she still suckles them, they're eating increasing amounts of solid food. Her trips from the den are now more frequent. The Kurawong follows. It suspects she'll lead to a free meal. But not this time. The she-devil has come out to collect fresh bedding. The youngsters are keen to be involved with rearranging the nest. More often it's the little female who fusses with nest material. The male joey is much less interested. The young mother is spending a considerable time away looking for food. And while she's away, Young devils will play, or at least play fight. Already the larger male joey is the more boisterous of the pair. But their fun and games take place in absolute silence. A predator wouldn't know that they're at home, alone. The female is some way off and unaware that a strange male is in the area. He will eat the joeys if he can find the den. Their mother stops. She has smelled the intruder's scent as he advances on the den. But the mere sight of the she-devil frightens him off. Without giving him a backward glance, she hurries to check on the joeys in the den.
She is satisfied that all is well. Most young female devils fail to breed in their first year. She has done very well to nurture two through their first five months. Three weeks later, the joeys are becoming curious about an exciting new world they can see and smell beyond the entrance to their burrow. As usual, it's the little female who is the more adventurous. Her more cautious brother follows her. He's fascinated by the snow, its softness, its coldness a shock to nose and toes. They seem to have no idea that in this large, open-air den, they're not alone. Their young voices attract dangerous eyes. The powerful talons of a masked owl could easily kill a young devil. The male loses his nerve and scurries back to the den. The female stands her ground, as bold as any she-devil. But she's also a survivor, and unknown dangers are best avoided. Once inside, they seek out one of the small side tunnels and resume excavating until the task degenerates into more play fighting. In recent weeks, they've put their energies into an entire network of side tunnels into which they can disappear whenever they feel threatened. This time, the intruder is only their mother. But she's been away for some time, and she'll have to bring them out of hiding with reassuring calls. When frightened, the youngsters crave contact with their mother and like to spread eagle themselves on her back. Her joeys may have grown large, but they are still nervous babies to be suckled and comforted by grooming. It's hard to imagine that these little angels will soon become real devils, but for now their mother can enjoy their innocence and await an end to the cold winter. Three months later, it's midsummer. Cradle Mountain has become a place of warmth and plenty. Within the den, there's plenty of aggravation. The joeys have become an enormous burden to their mother. The young male constantly attempts to mate with her. He instinctively practices the rough handling skills he used during his brutal adult life. When not being harassed, 
the mother still has to suckle her enormous and unruly pair, and she's becoming exhausted by it all. Outside, the forest has become a far more dangerous place. A spot-tailed quoll has taken to hunting in the trees near the den. Like the Tasmanian devil, it is a flesh-eating marsupial, but that's where the similarity ends. The quoll is a smart, silent killer. It stalks its prey like a silent assassin. Or as everyone knows when the devils are about, The young male continues to behave like a mating adult. He's become almost too strong for his long-suffering mother. On top of that, the female insists on hitching a ride. The forest is full of youngsters. A ring-tailed possum takes its first steps away from home. Young marsupials of many kinds are at risk in their first weeks alone. This is not the playground the devil seemed to think it is. For predators like the quoll, these are the best of times. With such a predator in the trees above their den, the young devils still rely on their mother's protection. But for how much longer will she tolerate their constant bullying and vicious aggression? Their behavior is as essential to them as the boisterous excesses of teenagers. But the moment is approaching when they must grow up. It happens quite suddenly. One night the she-devil finally decides she's had enough. She simply walks out on them. Now two years old, she must find a new den. She will not come back. And her joeys have no idea that she's gone. <coughs> Their young mother did all she could for the terrible twosome. But are they ready for life on their own? One moment they seem oafish enough to cope with anything. The next, they're babies again. Soon, hunger will drive them from the comfort of the den.
This long-nosed potteroo is a veteran of forest survival. With eyes and ears alert, he knows the clumsy routine of a young hunter. Two nights have passed since the Joey's mother left. The young female is very hungry. This forces her to try hunting. It's no use being noisy. A wily old potteroo won't serve himself up on a plate. She'll not see him again tonight. Both joeys are forced by hunger to search for insects, grubs or carrion. They're far too noisy for their own safety, and their desperate search for food leads them back towards the den, back towards the quoll. Meals don't compare to what they were when mother was around, but if they can't satisfy their hunger, they can perhaps satisfy their need to gnaw. They would do well not to wake the spotted quoll. But as usual, they simply can't keep quiet and can't stop squabbling. The quoll has missed this chance, but the devils will no doubt give him another. Their voices continue to advertise their whereabouts for miles around. Even the den's not the same without mother, but hunger makes virtue of necessity. The young female might once have ignored this old piece of wallaby skin. Now, it becomes the finest meal. During the final weeks of summer, when Cradle Mountain is splashed with blossoms of Tasmanian Waratah, the devil family of two becomes one. The young male has disappeared. A few weeks later, the wombat returns to the forest. By landmark or smell, he seems to recognize the place. Is this one of his old burrows? He's dug so many in 15 years of wandering around Cradle Mountain, it's hard to remember. It is his old den, more recently occupied by the Devil family. But the young female has now gone too.
A little reshuffling of the bedding and the place will be once more fit for a wombat. But what happened to the previous occupants? Were both young devils killed by the quoll? Such a scenario is likely. Three out of four devils die in their first year alone. As summer turns once more to autumn on Cradle Mountain, the wheel of life stops turning for an aged wallaby. Its carcass first attracts the attention of the sharp-eyed Kurawongs. Within a day, its smell attracts the attention of the undertakers. The distinctive white markings identify the little female, very much alive, but too cautious to feed by day. Wearily, she observes the carcass and listens to the forest. She has learned well the lesson of caution, a lesson her brother likely did not learn. This is more food than she's ever seen. Though half starved, she remains intensely alert. But a stranger approaches, equally silent, equally cautious. It is a huge male. The little she-devil has been caught out. She defends her prize by standing on top of it and screaming. kill her with a single bite, but he doesn't. The young upstart is a female, so he ignores her challenge. This male may well father her first litter of joeys if she remains in his forest. She has grown stubborn, aggressive, and brave beyond her age. But this is a contest she can never win. The young she-devil has acquired her survival skills from her mother. Perhaps she will pass on those skills to her offspring. The time soon comes for our young female to go searching for a den of her own. Barely a year old, she is driven by the same instincts that drove her own mother. And like her mother's life, hers too will soon become violent and dangerous. Once more, the autumn sun 
warms the ice-carved rock of Tasmania's Cradle Mountain. Once more, change is in the air.